Hey there everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel. My name is Hitesh and in this video I'll walk you through how to set up Nginx on a remote VPS as well as some of the behind the scenes of it and some learning stuff. We'll be deploying our very first website. Also we'll be checking up if the Nginx is up and running and what even is the Nginx. We'll go through with the basics of it. So uh, in case you are new here on my channel, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe as well. Your support is really, really important for me. And uh, comment target, not putting up much, just 90 comments. I hope we can do that. I know a lot more people than 90 watch these videos, but if you can just put up one comment uh, to boost my motivation or say, hey, I'm, I'm watching it from XYZ City, it really makes me happy that it's not just me talking alone in a room, talking to camera. There's somebody who's watching the videos and getting advantage from it. Anyways, let's go ahead and set up uh, the Nginx. I hope you're watching the series in the playlist. If you're jumping around, I this is a complete playlist of deploy. And we are on to, I guess, our third video now. Uh, so these are the documentation and let me walk you through what we have done so far. We have actually spinned up a new machine, a VPS on Linode. Feel free to use anything, DigitalOcean, whatever you like. And we have configured it properly and set it up securely using all the updates and upgrades and hardening it uh, with the SSH keys and disabling the root login, all of the things we have done. Now we have a situation that we are into the machine. This is the machine that we are, we are comfortably can log in into that with the SSH or with the password, however you want to go. Recommendation is password. Now I want to configure Nginx into this. Nginx is a web server so that I can deploy at least a basic website. I'll walk you through how to deploy more co uh, complex websites later on, but at least basics, start with the basics. That's always a good idea. So how can we do that? First of all, Nginx, what is this Nginx? So Nginx is a web server. In case you are old school like me on the web, you might've heard about uh, Apache, which was a pretty, which is also still to this date, a pretty good web server. The whole idea about the web server is if somebody walks into your IP address or your domain name, you just want to serve them with some web pages. For example, I went to Nginx, it wants to serve me this web page. This is a very static web page. How can you do that with your own machine? That's what Nginx allows you to do so. Now Nginx, although it's called as a reverse proxy software, I do have a dedicated videos on the proxy and reverse proxy. Consider this as a web server, but don't get fooled about that. It is very complex of a software, even so much that if you look at the books, there are so many books written on this, just one piece of software. It has so much of the capabilities, it can not only serve the static websites, it can actually serve a Node application, Django applications, Java applications, Spring Boot applications. It can do a lots of logging as well. It can use for redirections. It can use for load balancers. There's so much that you can do. You can even do by default A-B testing and IP-based geolocation on that. So much is possible with this software. I don't think that this web page does enough of justice with it, but hey, we got it covered. Now, of course, it's not possible to cover end to end of the Nginx, but we'll try our best to give you at least a brief idea so that you feel comfortable right at the home with the Nginx software. So how can we get started? Again, you have to go on to docs.chaiko.com. This is where I write all the documentation so that you can also follow along. So reading a little bit, Nginx is a pop popular open source web server that can be used to serve static files, dynamic content, proxy request, and so much more. We have gone through with that. So prerequisites, a server with the root access, a domain name IP address, a web server that can serve. So just basic whole summary is, you should be able to log in into the machine, either through the root user or any user. I'm not talking focused on the security. We have done that in the previous video. Now I'm focused on just on Nginx. How can we do that? First of all is sudo apt update. So let's go ahead and copy this and try to update this. I'm gonna go ahead and update my system first, although my system is updated, so I don't think so. We need to worry much about it. It's all good. Now the next step is install. The installation in Linux, it looks scary from outside, but it's not that scary. We have package managers now, which can actually download all the third party, not third party, all the dependencies of this package and can get it. It's, it's fairly easy, not that much of a big deal that people scare you off at least. So let's just go ahead and say install Nginx. And uh, yes, I definitely want to install all the, uh, our, whatever you need for that and uh, should be fairly simple of a process. Told you, that's it, your Nginx is up and running now. Not up and running, but it's, it's all there. Now to verify that whether the Nginx is starting or enabled, we need to run these two commands. The first command actually starts it, the Nginx as a process, and the second command enables it. That means even if the machine restart or anything, it keeps it up and running. So you want to run these two commands. 
you can actually just copy them and can run that all together as well. One by one would be a good idea, but I can just go ahead and run this and that's it. Now it is enabled. It is there into the system config. That means it is there. It is there to stay. Now, how can I verify that whether it is uh, installed or not? So I'll have to go into HTTP. Remember, we haven't installed any SSL certificates yet. That can also be done. But as of now, all you want to do is HTTP colon slash slash and then the IP address of your machine. It's actually easy. I can just go into my machine. I know the IP address of it. I can just copy this and I can go onto the browser and can say HTTP colon slash slash and the IP address. And there we go. If yours also say welcomes to Nginx, welcome to Nginx and see this web page either on white or dark mode, that means it's done. You have installed Nginx. Congratulations, I told you, it's not really that big of a deal. Configuring Nginx can be really daunting and can be really complex, but just getting installed Nginx and serving the web homepage, it's really the simplest task. Now, what could be the next step? The next step is also mentioned in the docs. So we'll just go with that. So set up Nginx, this is the part where we actually go ahead and do the setup. I'll not use this command exactly because it is using Vim. I'll change this into the documentation. I don't want to bog you down into the Vim rabbit hole. It's a good editor, no doubt, but I want to make these tutorials really friendly. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this command, but instead of the Vim, we are going to use sudo, and this is the configuration file. Inside the slash etc, you will find an Nginx folder, and this is where you'll find a lot of these files. So let's go ahead and see what's there in the slash etc slash Nginx. Let's go up there before we do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and cd slash etc, and I do have Nginx as a folder. If I go ahead and do ls, you'll see there is so many files up here. Each file serves a very different purpose and can be configured like endlessly. You saw there are books written onto it. So yeah, there's a lot of configuration that can happen. The most important ones is the site available, but a lot of things are written in the chunk format in the Nginx, and I'll walk you through with some of them. But these are the module-wise files that you want to have. Right now, the file that we are interested in is inside the sites available, and then we have the slash default. If I take you into this folder, all the blue ones are folder, which is not a good idea to find a folder, but hey, in this case, we are okay with that. So if I go into the sites available, sites available and do a quick ls. You can see there's just one file, but there could be more files here as well. Right now we have just default and I want to open that up. I'm gonna go ahead and use a sudo to open this file, otherwise I won't be able to. And I'll use a nano for this one to open and I'll just say, hey, just open up the default. If I go ahead and hit enter, you'll see gazillion of the text here, which is okay because most of it is commented and it just shows you how it works. Now you'll see the block. So there are a lot of blocks and chunks in the Nginx which are given. Right now you can see the first block which says server and it says it's listening on the port 80 and on port 80 it's listening to default server. We can just go ahead and do SSL configuration as well which we'll see probably later, not sure. But you can see there's so much options. The one option that's written here is it says root which says slash war slash www then slash HTML. So this is a root folder which is accessing, and there it's trying to access some of the files. The files could be index, or could be index.html, or could be index.html, or could be index.nginx.debian.html. So when I say that web server automatically picks up the file which is known as index.html or index.htm, this is exactly the configuration where you write it and make it available. In some of the earlier servers, especially the Apache one, there used to be another file here which called as default.html. So sometimes if the index file is not there, it might pick up with the file with the name of default as well. These all settings are mentioned up here. And this also mentioned that where all these locations are, so you can configure it for PHP, you can deny. There's, there's so much that you can do. So you can see the file is decently long. We'll definitely walk through with some of them, but hey, in this case, it's okay. It's, it's actually giving us all the location where the things are and where can I find it. The most important for me is the root where the file location is, which is not hashed, so it is available. And then it says the server name is also here and I can see that the index and all these files are there. So I can just go ahead and make it available and I can say that server name could be localhost as well, that's okay. Then we can see the files are there and these files are there and then we have location as well. So we can just go ahead and replace the file content with the following file and we can see that what can go wrong with this when we go ahead and replace all these things with this and uh, can have it. Now, now at this point you can go ahead and install some better code editors or something like that. 
I'm not gonna change it much. I'll just keep it as it is. Uh, it would be really nice if I can just go ahead and remove everything and show you how it works on the default one. Let me just try to do that. All right, took some time, but yeah, I removed everything inside the file. I should have opened that into Vim. I'm much more friendlier in the Vim than compared to Nano. But anyways, uh, all the content in the file is gone now. Now what I want to do next is just go up here, copy this, all the things so that we have a fresh start, uh, come back here and I just want to paste the content here. Now it's much more cleaner to look and we can see what's exactly happening here. The first thing is the server. So we are putting up a server block, which is listening on port 80 and the server name is localhost, which is also good. The route where it's trying to access the directory, the file or the folder where it is trying to access all this is var www.html. We need to go into this files and folder and do some configurations and settings here as well. It's looking for the file with the name of either index, index.html or index.html. These are default file that, would, that it will automatically pick and serve. Now in the location, it will try to get the file. If it doesn't get the file, it will throw the default 404, which is there in the nginx. All right, so a lot of stuff. So let's go ahead and hit control O so that we can go ahead and write this file and go ahead and do the exit. Now, the file is still there and we have configured it, uh, but it's not yet done. The job is not yet done. We have to do a couple of more steps. Now we have to go into the document root directory if it doesn't exist. So step one is go into slash war www and HTML. Let's go ahead and see if this directory exists or not. So I'll go ahead and hit the CD. I need to go into slash war and slash www and then HTML and see what exists here. It says index.nginx-debian.html. We'll keep it there to see a couple of, investigate a couple of things, but we'll keep it there. Now, if this directory doesn't exist, which is also a case in some of the, peep, uh, some of the, some of the VPS as well, then you can go ahead and create this. Once you create this, you also have to run this command so that this folder have enough permission so that the user who has logged in and have installed the Nginx can actually access this folder. That's why this is there, but we don't need to do this. Apart from this, this directory also needs execution permission so that somebody can go inside the Linux. In order to access the Linux directories, you need to provide an executable permissions to our directories because once you double click on that, that's executing of the directories. You are going inside that. So don't worry about this. This is totally okay. Now we're going to go ahead and create a sample index.html file into this one. Now remember, uh, Nginx also worry about the order of the file as well. So index, index.html, index.html, and then this file, which is index engine. So whichever comes first is getting picked up first. So what we're going to do is just create this new file, uh, index.html. We'll open this up and we'll copy paste this stuff. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to go ahead and say touch and I'll say index.html. And we are going to again use nano for this one. So, oops, the permissions denied. I'm not permission. I'm not allowed to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and add the permissions. So let's go ahead and run the commands. Good that we have fallen to this error. It's good to have errors. Let's go ahead and change the ownership of this directory, then provide the permissions. So as I was mentioning, this sometimes happens. In fact, this happens all the time. And now we are able to not only just see what's happening, we can actually go ahead and create files as well. So touch and index.html. There we go. Now I'm allowed to do so. LS and I can open this up. So not the Vim, but I'll go with the nano and index.html. Yep, that's the one and open this up. Now let's go ahead and copy some of the code. Not really the biggest of the code, but I'll just go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it up here. I'll go ahead and change this a little bit. So instead of the hello world, I'm gonna go ahead and say something different. Hello, chai code, and that, that's good enough. I'm gonna go ahead and control C, uh, control O first to write this out. And then I can go ahead and do control X to exit this. All right, so our file is there. And now we can test the Nginx configuration for any syntax error. Probably we might have not copy pasted properly. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and paste this. And it shouldn't be like that. So I can just go ahead and remove that. sudo nginx dash t. Okay, there should be just one option. And hit enter. So it says configuration file syntax is okay. Test is successful. Looks good, looks good. All right, so reload the Nginx. This is important because we have changed some of the files and even changed a lot of configuration. So it's important that we go ahead and configure that. 
I'll go ahead and remove these comments. Uh, they should be up at the top. I'll update the documentation. Don't you worry on that part. Right now when I'm copying, it's also copying the hash as well. I don't like that. I think it should be better. And don't worry, by the time you'll be watching the videos, it will be all updated. I'll go ahead and reload this. And now, technically, I should be able to see immediate results up here that what's happening. And there we go. Hello, Chai Code. Told you, it's really, really easy to actually have your own Nginx and configuration. So you can see, just like we can just go ahead and deploy. And by the way, all of your React apps, Vue apps, ultimately are just HTML, CSS, and JavaScripts only. You can put these files into those fi uh, folders and just call it index and just make it up and running. But a couple of things you should really know about Nginx is their documentation. In the Nginx, everything needs a configuration. You want to serve CSS, that's a configuration. You want to serve JavaScript, it's a configuration. You want to serve images, JPEGs, PNGs, or PDFs, that's a configuration. You have to configure it. And don't worry, there are so many of the Git repositories which are available to run all these things. So whatever you want to do, like rate limiting, request module rate limiting, SSL, Everything is a configuration that you need to do. So SSL module, if you want to have this, just go ahead and click on this. You can just go ahead and have a directives. Each of those blocks are known as directives. And you can have so many of the SSLs up here. So I can just go ahead and click on this. There we go, you can see uh, syntax, defaults, this is how it looks like. Everything is available up here. I'll probably walk you through with some more of this, but I think with this video, it is enough uh, for you to get started with at least the Nginx install it, see how it's being done, where to find the files, and put up your at least basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, and make sure you do the configuration for them. And good start with your VPS. Really proud of you. So go ahead and subscribe the channel. And if you haven't yet commented out, go ahead, please put that comment. And I'll catch you up in the next video.